Welcome into Steelers Talk, Yenzers. Today, I'm going to be talking about the changes that are going to be made from a philosoph philosophical standpoint in the Pittsburgh Steelers front office, led by Omar Khan and assistant GM Andy Weidel. Andy Weidel is somebody that, ha that is coming to us from the Philadelphia Eagles organization. Some of that worked for Howie Roseman for a very, very long time. Howie Roseman is known as one of the best NFL GMs in history. He's one of the, be he's one of the best team builders. He's built two separate uh, mega house, like superstar level uh, rosters. Uh, he, he's a Super Bowl champion, and Andy Weidel worked directly under him from 2016 to 2022. Uh, and like I said, he's a Howie Roseman disciple, and he's looking to bring some of those principles that have made the Eagles so successful over the last half decade to the Steel City. I can't wait to show you uh, what kind of changes are going to be coming because Omar Khan coming in here I think is going to be a really, really good GM for the Steelers. He showed at the trade deadline that he's willing to be aggressive, that he's willing to make the moves that he's wanting to make. Kevin Colbert, the old GM, was somebody that was a bit more conservative. It seems like Omar Khan's going to be a bit more aggressive, just like Howie Roseman is, the, the Eagles GM, uh, because he's one of the best in the National Football League. So it seems like the Steelers brought in one of his assistants, and Andy Weidel, to to be the assistant GM here in, in Pittsburgh to kind of copy or steal some of the concepts that Howie Roseman has implemented that have made the Eagles such a success. I'm going to be getting into the Roseman rules in just a second, but before we get into today's action, go ahead and subscribe to the channel here at Steelers Talk. We provide comprehensive premium Steelers news and rumors content every single day here on YouTube. If you're looking for one spot to get all of your Steelers news and rumors content from the draft to free agency to every time they make a cut, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You're not going to regret it. Try it out for a week, guys. If you, if, you, if you subscribe to the channel right now, try it for a week. You don't like the content, unsubscribe. I guarantee that you will enjoy the content here at the channel because we are passionate about, we, about what we do and we love the Steelers. So click that subscribe button right now. All right, so the first Roseman rule here that the Steelers are going to be trying to uh, 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 bring into the Steelers organization, their front office, is invest in the quarterback position. Now, you might say every organization does this, Jack. Every team is looking for that superstar franchise quarterback, and that is true. But Howie Roseman and the Eagles have been specifically – focused on not just the starting quarterback, but backups as well. You need to have a solid plan at backup quarterback. The Eagles have been willing to pay big money for backup quarterbacks for a long time, all the way back to Chase Daniel, to Nick Foles, to, to, to even Gardner Minshew right now. And it's hard to disagree with the results. The one Super Bowl championship for the Eagles in their history came on the back of a back of a backup quarterback in Nick Foles. A premium backup can do wonders for you in the National Football League. Now, I'm not saying that we, we should we should expect Kenny Pickett uh, to to get hurt and that the Steelers should expect a backup to win them a Super Bowl. I'm just saying that if that happens, you have to have a solid plan in place so your season is not absolutely over if that ends up happening. Hopefully, Kenny Pickett is that guy uh, to be their franchise quarterback in the future. Let me know what you think about about Kenny Pickett's future here. Do you think that he's going to be, at some point, a top 10 quarterback in the National Football League? Type HY if you think hell yes, or type HN if you think hell no. This is the pinned comment on today's show. So whenever you get an ad break, go ahead and go into the comment section, find that pinned comment, and answer today's question. All right, next Roseman rule is build the trenches. Roseman is well known for his draft history where he's, it seems like he only drafts offensive linemen or defensive linemen unless he has two first rounders. If he has that second first rounder, you'll, he'll take a Devontae Smith, a wide receiver, right? He'll take somebody else. But at the end of the day, the Eagles build the trenches. They overbuild them. They stuff the roster with as many premium and, and just straight-up solid offensive and defensive linemen as they possibly can because they understand that NFL games are won in the trenches, and they understand that on the offensive line, you can't convert fourth and third and short without a good offensive line. It's hard to be a good goal line team without a good offensive line. You can't protect your quarterback without a good O-line. You need a good offensive line to protect your quarterback. And then on defense, you need to be able – you need to have a really, really good – uh, 
depth. You need to have good depth at every single position so that you can, so that the guys on the field can stay fresh. You need guys, you can't just have the same four guys out there time and time and time again because by the fourth quarter, they're going to be gas. So Howie Roseman has been for a long time a preacher of go and get the best defensive line players that you can. Overstuff the roster. You look at the Eagles defensive line. It is always, always, always stacked with defensive line talent. They have great backups. They have great roti rotational pieces. Look for Andy Weidel and Omar Khan to do the same for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the 2023 offseason. And, you know, even when you think that they're set, even when they sign a defensive tackle in free agency, still expect them to take a defensive tackle or edge rusher or both in the draft. They want to keep that supply up. They want to keep they want to keep a, a, a talent flow going through those units so that they're always tip top shape. They're always in good shape because if you have a good offensive line and a good defensive line, you always have a chance uh, uh, at winning an NFL football game. So coming up, I'm going to tell you how rule number two could affect the Steelers draft strategy. But before I do that, let's have a word from our sponsor at Fanatics. And they have a great, uh, it, so if you don't have a, a lot of Steelers uh, apparel, uh, in your closet, you want to add a couple of pieces. They have a great Pittsburgh Steelers shirt combo on their website right now. You can get shirts like this. I think that, you know, they're very high quality. They're great prices, quick delivery times, just like with their terrible towels, guys. If you are low on Steelers gear, you want to add a couple pieces to your wardrobe, go ahead and go to chatsports.com slash pit combo to get shirts like these. I, 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 I mean, when I started this job, guys, I had zero Pittsburgh Steelers apparel. And then I get all my stuff from Fanatics. Now they are a fantastic company, great prices, great quality, fast delivery times. Now I have a whole closet full of Steelers stuff because I just can't stop buying this stuff, guys. All right, so now let's talk about how rule number two from Howie Roseman, spend on the big guys, is going to affect how the Steelers approach the draft. So I think that they're for sure going to add at least one premier offensive lineman early on in the draft, whether it be in round one or in round two, they're going to draft one. These, I think, are the five guys that are probably the most likely to get drafted by the Steelers. I think Peter Skaronsky and Paris Johnson Jr. are probably going to be gone by the Steelers pick, but they could take a guy like Broderick Jones at number 17, Anton Harrison from Oklahoma is somebody that is rising up draft boards because apparently he's going to show out at the combine. Darnell Wright and Dewan Jones are massive right tackle prospects they could probably get on day two. And then if the Steelers wanted to go interior offensive lineman, they could go a guy like John Michael Schmitz, who is a center slash guard, can play either one. He's going to be a really, really good player in the National Football League for a long time. So if he's the best player on their board, say at number, four, number 50 overall, they can go ahead and take him. I wouldn't bat an eye whatsoever. you got to build the offensive line if you're the Steelers. Then on the defensive line, let's start with defensive tackle. They could go out and get a guy like Brian Brzee. Let's, see that, let's say that all the offensive tackle prospects that they like at 17 are gone. They could go out and get a guy like Brian Brzee, someone that's a great, great fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, gap penetrating run scheme on defense. I think he'd be a great five technique or three technique when Cam Hayward steps away. Then you got Kalai Jacansi from Pitt. A lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans know this guy well. He is athletic. He can rush the passer as a five technique. If he makes it to the second round, look for the, for, the, for the Steelers to consider taking this guy. Then the Hawaiian Mountain himself, Siaki Ika, the nose tackle, my number one nose tackle in this year's draft class. Really, really good run stuffer. Could be that one technique the Steelers have been looking for. And then same thing with Keanu Benton, someone that's been rising, someone that was really, really good, has been really good in the process so far, someone that can rush the passer as well. I, th I really like Keanu Benton. If he's there, like at pick 50 or even in round three, I would – Definitely consider taking him if I were the Steelers. Then Mozzie Smith, really good run stuffer as well. Another option for the Steelers to take advantage of. And then on the outside, if you want to get a rotational piece to go along with TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, there's Miles Murphy that you could potentially get at number 17. Really toolsy player. Another toolsy player in Andre Carter Jr. Great athlete, long limbs. Somebody that Mike Tomlin can mold into that next great off outside linebacker. Nolan Smith, physical freak. If he's there at pick 32, I think the Steelers will definitely look at him. And then Will McDonald, the fourth, was the best edge rusher in Mobile for, this, for the senior ball. Point blank, period. He made Darnell Wright look silly, and Darnell Wright was fantastic all week. This guy's going to be a really good player. I think he'll probably go day two. I really like him. Then B.J. Ojolari. I actually like B.J. Ojolari better than Aziz Ojolari, and Ozi Aziz is a pretty darn good player in the NFL himself. I think B.J. would be a fantastic fit for what the Pittsburgh Steelers want to do. So 
What this means, guys, building the trenches is the priority for the Steelers, which means I would expect cornerback to be a pick that the Steelers end up using on day two. Right? There's, this cornerback class is excellent. You can get some really great value on day two of this year's draft. So I think that they will. I think the Steelers will hone in on the de on the defensive line and the offensive line in round one. I really don't think it's going to be a corner uh, because I think that this uh, I think that this front office is starting to shift towards a philosophy of building the trenches and using high level draft picks to fill those positions. So let me know what your opinion is in the comment section right now. When should the Steelers? use a draft pick on a quarterback in the draft this year. Type one for day one, so that's just round one, or type two for day two, so that's rounds two or three. I, th I really don't think they'll go without go past day two without taking one. I think it's either going to be day one or day two, so let me know in the comment section right now what you think. Type one if you think round one, or type two if you think round two or three. Next up on the Roseman rules, invest in, pet in pass catchers and safeties. Now, this is what the Eagles did last year by trading uh, one of their first-round picks for A.J. Brown, right? And it completely changed the dynamic of their offense. A.J. Brown, one of the best receivers in the National Football League. Howie Roseman's not afraid to invest in pass catchers at the tight end position, at the wide receiver position. He spent a first-round pick on Devontae Smith, and, of course, he spent another one on A.J. Brown, and that offense was as dynamic as it comes. Quez Watkins as more of a deep threat. Uh, you know, they're not going to overpay necessarily for – for wide receivers, uh, but they're going to spend some money. They're going to use some uh, high-level assets on guys like this. And you look at the Steelers' wide receiver depth chart right now, they're going to invest in guys like Deontay Johnson and George Pickens in the future. Calvin Austin III, if he develops into the guy that we hope that he becomes, he's going to get a big payday as well. Expect the, expect the Steelers to add another uh, wide receiver in free agency or in the draft, somebody in the mid-rounds, day three, or someone in, on a cheaper deal in free agency to kind of give them a bit more depth. And then another thing that I want to say, guys, is that I think personally, safety is kind of a position that's kind of looked down on in NFL circles along with inside linebacker. But to me, a high-level safety is incredibly valued to an NFL defense because the safeties literally pretty much do everything, right? They have to play, they have to play deep. They have to be able to read quarterback's eyes. They're going to, they're going to have to play, uh, they're going to have to seal the gap in a run, in a run fit, right? They're going to have to uh, match up one-on-one -on -one with a tight end that's bigger than them or a slot receiver that's shiftier than they are. They have to do a ton of stuff. So if you get a guy like a Minka Fitzpatrick or even like a Terrell Edmonds, that's a really darn good player, or a guy like Demonte KZ, you're going to hold on to them. You're going to pay them the money that they deserve. And the thing is, a high-level safety costs way less than a high-level corner just because uh, the, the feeling around the league is that a high-end corner is worth more than a safety. And I just, I just really don't think that that's the truth. You look at guys like DeMonte KZ, someone that came back from injury and completely changed the dynamic of the Steelers' defense. That's what good safety play does. I really think that if you combine these three guys, KZ, Edmonds, and Fitzpatrick on the field at the same time, time in that three safety package I think the Steelers defense is one of if not the best defense in the National Football League because you got great versatility you can do a whole bunch of different things with three safeties on the field and I think that uh, organizations like the Eagles and now the Steelers are really going to prioritize safety play and fourth up here on the Roseman rules find value at cornerback inside linebacker and running back so essentially what find value means is don't pay top dollar for, for these things, right? Cornerbacks, in my opinion, are very similar to running backs uh, on offense, right? Running backs, you can find good running backs that can be successful in the league uh, in the fifth round, sixth round. You can find cheap contracts in free agency. Cornerbacks are very much similar, right? It's different with like a Sauce Gardner or Darrell Revis or Jalen Ramsey, someone that is a bona fide superstar and can really be trusted one-on-one -on -one against any matchup point blank period. But there's just not th that many guys in the league. And some of these guys are making enormous amount of money, but they're not those kinds of guys. So what Howie Roseman has done with the Eagles for years is finding guys at a value, guys that are kind of undercut, some guys that are, are being doubted. And you can find good cornerbacks pretty easily in this league later in the draft, especially in this year's draft, and then also in free agency. And at the end of the day, guys, in the National Football League, the pass rush is king. I think that that takes priority. So you got to find good corners. I'm not saying don't have good corners, but what I am saying is find value at those positions. And Cameron Sutton, that's the big question, is is three years, $12 million, a, a value contract 
for the Pittsburgh Steelers, for a guy like Cam Sutton, a guy that isn't really a true number one cornerback, a guy that's a good corner. He's going to provide a lot of value to a team that needs a guy that can play both inside and outside, and the Steelers could be one of those teams. But is $12 million over three years with how expensive the defense already is, is that really worth it? Or would the Steelers rather use that money to go get another really solid piece on the defensive line and really make it one of the best in the National Football League? I personally don't know the answer to that. I hope that they can make, get a deal done with Cam for like $10 million, kind of a more team-friendly deal. I hope that's what happens. But I have a creeping feeling uh, that, the, that the Steelers organization is just not going to want to pay him the money that frankly, he does deserve. So let me know in the comment section right now, which position would you rather spend big money on this offseason, cornerback or defensive line? For me, I would probably, I, I want both. I think I want a great defensive line and a great secondary, but I really think that the Steelers are going to be focusing in on that defensive line. Let me know what you think is the right answer in the comment section.